Greetings. I'm Pharonix Systems Engineer Jason Green, and I'd like to welcome you to the Configuring a Deep Freeze Workstation Install File video tutorial. This is the first of several video tutorials we'll be producing, providing instruction on how to take advantage of some of Deep Freeze's most important features. In this video, the goal is to familiarize you with the options available for the configuration of Deep Freeze Enterprise. Once you've successfully downloaded the Deep Freeze Enterprise package from the Pharonix Labs or Pharonix Corporate website, browse to the root of the download folder and run the Deep Freeze Ent Installer application. The Deep Freeze Ent Installer will install two items under your Start Menu Programs folder. Browse to the Pharonix folder, Deep Freeze 7 Enterprise, and we'll find these two items, the Deep Freeze Administrator and the Deep Freeze Console. If we open up the Deep Freeze Enterprise console, we'll see that this console allows us to manage and administer Deep Freeze workstations in our environment. To configure Deep Freeze workstation install packages, we utilize the Deep Freeze Configuration Administrator. And we can find this either under the Deep Freeze Program Group under the Start menu or by clicking on the icon with the gears and the A. The Deep Freeze Configuration Administrator is broken into six logical tabs. The first tab is the Passwords tab, which allows us to configure up to 15 passwords of two different types. The first password type is Workstation Password. The Workstation Password allows us access to the Deep Freeze boot control screen at the physical workstation itself. Should we require the ability to reboot a workstation frozen or reboot a workstation thawed to perform maintenance or software installation exercises at the endpoint itself? The second password is the command line password, and this password is utilized with our command line uh, tool dfc.exe. If we wish to administer or manage our deep freeze environment utilizing a third party DMS, such as Altiris, Dalcase, Landesk, or SCCM, it's imperative that we specify a command line password in the deep freeze configuration administrator. An additional option that can apply to all passwords is the ability to set up a timeout period or a period of validity for these passwords. This feature allows us to specify a start date as well as an expiration date. At midnight on the date of expiration, the password will no longer work. The next tab is the Drives tab, and this tab allows us to configure and select which drives on a Deep Freeze workstation we wish to be frozen. By default, all drives are selected. It's important to note that the frozen drive selection uh, only applies to drive, physical drives attached to the workstation itself and does not by default apply to any external USB or FireWire drives. To modify that setting, we have the options down towards the bottom right of the Drives Configuration tab. One of the unique features of Deep Freeze is the ability to create what we call thaw spaces. What thaw spaces allow us to do is configure a virtual partition that's hosted on a frozen drive that may um, provide options for persistent storage or the ability to redirect user profiles uh, or map user directories. Thaw spaces allow us to select a drive letter, specify the size of the thaw space or virtual partition. Uh, the frozen drive that it's going to be hosted on, and whether or not we want that drive to be visible or hidden. We have the ability within Deep Freeze to configure up to eight thaw spaces. The next tab is the Workstation Tasks tab. Workstation Tasks are embedded tasks located directly within the Workstation install file that allow us to perform uh, several uh, different types of functions. Restart, shutdown, and idle time tasks are all quite similar. A shutdown task, for example, allows us to specify a day, days, or weekends, or only weekdays, during which, at a specified time, we want Deep Freeze to automatically shut down the workstation. We can allow the user to cancel the task if we wish, as well as customize a message that will be displayed to the user prior to the task initiating. The restart task uh, works the exact same as the shutdown task. The idle time task allows us to specify 
the behavior for a workstation should a period of idle time be met or exceeded. So for example, if we want to ensure our workstations are rebooted on a regular basis to ensure that the uh, environment remains fresh and clean, we can suggest that if a workstation is idle for 45 minutes, for example, we want the workstation to restart. Again, we have the ability to specify a message that will be displayed should a user be sitting in front of that workstation at that time. The more important tasks for the purposes of IT teams and administration of workstations, perhaps deployment of patches and updates, are going to be the next three uh, task types. Batch file, thawed period, and Windows update. A batch file task allows us to specify a period during which a workstation will reboot itself into a thawed state and run a batch file. For example, in this case, we will reboot the workstation into a thawed state daily at 7 p.m. And we will have this workstation task end at 8.30 p.m. We can specify to allow the user to cancel the task or to shut down after the task is completed. We also want to ensure that the keyboard and mouse are disabled to prevent anyone uh, who might be uh, in front of that workstation from messing with the configuration while the workstation is in an unprotected state. Once we've configured our batch file task, we'll want to uh, jump over to the batch file configuration tab and either uh, create or import a batch file to run during that batch file period. On the left side of the batch file configuration screen, we also have the ability to specify which account the batch file will run under, whether it's a system account or a specified user account. Mm -hmm. The thawed period task does much the same as the batch file task with the exception of the fact that it will not do anything once the workstation's in a thawed state. Uh, this feature is really handy, again, if we talk about uh, perhaps deploying updates from SCCM or Dell case, a third-party DMS, and we simply want workstations to reboot themselves into an unprotected state to make sure that they're available to have updates deployed to them uh, and, and successfully installed. And the most important workstation task is going to be the Windows Update task. The Windows Update task allows us to configure Deep Freeze to manage the installation and application of Windows updates. And I'll quickly show you how to configure this. Perhaps we want to create a, a Windows Update task to align with Microsoft Patch Tuesday. And we'll start it at 12 a.m. Or sorry, maybe we'll start it at 11 p.m. on Tuesday evening. And we have the option to either create a window for example, set an end time or have Deep Freeze completely manage the Windows Update process and simply end the uh, Windows Update task when the Windows Update has been completed. Again, we have the same options that exist for the batch file and thawed period tab where we can allow users to cancel a task, um, ensure that the workstation simply shut down once the task is completed. And again, we always want to make sure the disable keyboard and mouse option is selected uh, when we have the workstation um, in, a thawed, in a thawed state. Once we click on OK, we will immediately be taken to the Windows Update Configuration tab. There are several configuration options that exist on the Windows Update Configuration tab. Towards the bottom, we have the ability to specify whether we want Deep Freeze to go out to the public uh, Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows Update website to download updates. Uh, if this option is selected, please note that only critical and uh, important ta um, updates will be, uh, security updates and critical updates will be applied to the workstation. Or if we have a WSUS or an SUS server uh, within the network, we can specify the location of that server as well as the WSUS target ID. In this case, Deep Freeze will download all uh, specified updates um, associated with that target ID. Up towards the top, we have several other options. The ability to not cache Windows updates. Uh, what, this is uh, pretty much a legacy feature of Deep Freeze, and this is the way Deep Freeze Windows Update tasks have always worked. Uh, in this case, the workstation will reboot itself into a thawed state. It'll contact either the public Windows Update website or the uh, WSUS server, download all relevant updates, install them, and end uh, at the uh, end of that period. 
as you can imagine in an environment that may have a few thousand workstations all configured with the same Windows Update task, what this means is that you have a thousand workstations all contacting the update server at the same time. In this case, the preference may be to cache Windows updates. The cache Windows updates feature is something relatively new in version 7.5 of Deep Freeze, and it allows workstations to download Windows updates even if the workstation is frozen and keep those updates in a uh, thaw space that Deep Freeze creates if the cache Windows update option has been selected. What this means is that when the Windows update task runs, the downloads or the Windows updates will be taken from that local folder and installed locally. There will be no need for workstations to go out and download updates during the task itself. The final tab in the Deep Freeze Configuration Administrator is the Advanced Options. Towards the upper left, we have Network Options, which allow us to select either a LAN or a LAN-WAN configuration. Selecting the LAN-WAN configuration allows us to specify a console IP address that we want the workstations to report to, or a console name that we want that workstation to report to. Under the Advanced Options section are several options that generally we suggest not be modified unless uh, directed to by our technical support team. The two uh, options that are, uh, you know, quite uh, uh, quite fine to modify if necessary is the restart on log off option which will ensure that every time a user logs off of Windows the workstation will be rebooted as well as the protect, protect master boot record option which uh, either enables or disables the ability for deep freeze to protect the master boot record. Once your desired settings have all been configured in the deep freeze configuration administrator simply click create, create workstation install program Provide a name for this workstation install program and save it out. To install Deep Freeze within your environment on the target workstations, simply run the, uh, the workstation install file that you've created using the configuration administrator. Upon completion of that application being run on the workstations, the workstations will reboot frozen, protected, and will report into your Deep Freeze Enterprise console.